where my client is. But and he said I went to Wisconsin. They could oh, use Wisconsin. one of them. Iowa. Okay. But that was oh, just a uh, weekend. Carl told him how much the only one that refused oh, to be too well, near the seat. It's new for the bathroom. I, um, I taught a, in the uh, QuickBooks for uh, some churches over there. there. I, I went from, we, that's exactly that's on that Friday morning. morning. But they bring in bottled water. Yeah, and Saturday I mean, we start from out. But he said <laughs> Uh, nine, we will nine, serve, so maybe they won't even use them. I don't. I didn't know there was water there. Well, what, what's the chances that? Uh, I didn't know there was a water line there. Uh, the little laurel spiders for your water. for your trees and stuff was they they they, they, they stop it every year I think and then they renew it. And well, there is a ditch. The ditch uh, goes right under that. No, I think for this year we're okay. Really yeah, I think they, they did it for two years this time, so we're okay this year. We only, we Average. only have one. <laughs> Wait, well, I just go down straight down the line, right? What do you think? Oh. Oh, All right. We did. I think they did. Good morning. Welcome to the uh, August 12, 2015 Planning Commission. Um, roll call, please. Strong. Here. Really? Here. Elliot is absent. Diaz? Here. Willach? Here. Chiliano? Here. Norman? I'm sorry, Aguilar. Here. <laughs> I'm an old. Stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's move on to item two, public comment. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressed in the Planning Commission may be limited to the, at the discretion of the Chair. At any time, please use the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Do we have anybody wishing to make public comments at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on to item three and let the record reflect that Mr. Elliott is here. Item three is approval of minutes. Make a motion that we approve the minutes from July 22nd. A second that. Roll call, please. Song? Uh, yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Whitlatch? Abstain. Heliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Uh, the minutes have been approved. Uh, let's go to item four, partial map, public consideration. Uh, action on a public map in this section of agenda will be heard in one public hearing unless anyone wishing to discuss any one of the item requests that it will be pooled for a separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any items unless you request it. Uh, item P B, 4B, is going to be pulled for, uh, for discussion later on. Anybody needing to recuse themselves on item A? Uh, not a, so much to recuse, but just disclosure. I've known Mr. Wilbur for many years, but we haven't done any thing lately or in fact if he wants to call me up I'd like to do some business with him but he hasn't <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, that, but that shouldn't affect anything I like I said I don't have any financial impact on, on the deal. So okay. just, and for disclosure's sake dear friends of mr. Wilbur for many years shouldn't You're make very any popular difference. person yes he is a popular <laughs> person yes of course I have friends <laughs> okay so let's uh, let's go on item four, this is to approve a category exemption consistent with the California Environmental Equality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to the Title 14 uh, California Code Regulation, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to the new construction or conven a conversion of small structures and conditionally approved the tentative partial map number PPM 1505. Uh, before that, let me open the uh, public comment, uh, which I think I forgot to do, so I'll We'll open that. Anybody wishing to make any comments on this item for 3A? Uh, <clears throat> on the board? Okay, let's, uh, then, uh, then we'll move on 
would uh, entertain a motion for this item. Make a motion to approve. I second that. Okay, it's been moved and second. Uh, roll call, please. Fong? Uh, yes. Millings? Yes. Elliot? Yes. 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 Whitlatch? Yes. Juliano? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. And before I forget, we are, we're going to close that public comment for attendance parcel map number PPM 15017. And that motion has been passed. Uh, let's go on to item 4B. Uh, tentative parcel map number PPM 15020. And, April, I guess you have you want to talk about this item. Good morning, Chairman Gong and Commissioners. Uh, parcel map one, uh, 15017, sorry, 020, for Tom Marshall. The agent is Neil Zerling. I'm sorry, is it 15017? 15020. The agent has requested and staff concurs in changing, revising the Condition num of approval number seven regarding Caltrans. To read, the reading would be the applicant, his successors and assigns are notified that if State Route 201 is scheduled for widening along the north line of parcel two and after Caltrans provides just compensation for the value of the land, the owner may be required to dedicate to Caltrans the additional of right, right of way required to accommodate the ultimate configuration of State Route 01 along this frontage. Interesting the use of worm versus the word shell. So it really doesn't mean anything, may. <coughs> Commissioner Whitlatch, uh, we discussed this with Caltrans, uh, with Mike Navarro specifically, and he was, uh, uh, he was satisfied with the language. Um, they do know that this is not an imminent project, so this could occur at any time in the future. And basically, if they're going to pay just compensation, then dedicate it over to them. Okay. Staff's presentation. Okay. Uh, let me open the public comment for, uh, for this item here. I wish you to make public comment. Any more comments appear on the board? Uh, seeing none, uh, close the public comment and go on to the. Uh, was there changes that you want to make on this, or? That that was the change requested for the condition number seven. Okay. So this is a category exemption consistent with California Environment Quality Act and the state sequel guideline pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations, Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to the new construction or conversion of spot structure and conditionally approved tentative partial map number PPM 15020 with a modification or as Correct. discussed. I'll make a motion we approve it with a change to number seven of planning conditions that the uh, applicant may, may be required to de dedicate land after just compensation. And we approve mouthful PPM 15-020. I'll second the motion. Uh, it's the motion is second. Uh, roll call, please. Gong? Yes. Millie? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willard? Yes. Juliana? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay, moving on to item five, public hearing. This is a tentative map number TM837, Morningstar v uh, Ventures, LLC, Day Drafting Services. This is a category exemption and tentative map to subdivide three existing partial total of 3.5 acres into a 16 lot subdivision Assessor parcel number APM 230-200-006 uh, is approximately one acre. APM 230-200-003 two, uh, two is approximately 1.52 acres and APM 230-200-011 is approximately 0 0.96 acre. The proposal is to subdivide 3.5 acres into 16 residential lots ranging from 
7,200 square feet to 8,250 square feet with one temporary drainage basin. The site is located along the North uh, Lafont Road, south of Liscombe Avenue in the community of Tipton. And my thank is Chuck. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself from this. Okay. Alice? Okay, so uh, Chuck, you get the floor. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Chuck Przybilski, uh Planning Division from the Resource Management Agency. As the chairman mentioned, we have a tentative map before you, tentative map 837. Uh, an overview of this tentative map, as was described by the chairman, is to subdivide three and a half acres into 16 residential lots with one temporary drainage basin. Uh, the, the lots are approximately 7,200 to 8,200 square feet. In size is going to be constructed in three phases. The ponding basin is approximately 2,700 square feet. And I'll discuss this later, but there's an agreement with the uh, uh, Tipton Community Service District to provide water and sewer. Uh, it's going to be a categorical exemption, the applicant's Morning Star Ventures, and it's in the community of Tipton. Uh, you see the location along Highway 99, south of uh, Tulare, on the west side of 99, pretty much in the central portion of the valley. Here's an aerial photo of the site. Uh, see houses to the west and south of the site. There's a little storage vehicle yard to the east. And uh, there's a vacant lot to the north, but this is the site along LaFond Avenue here. There is a storm drainage detention basin, which I'll explain a little bit later, that they will uh, connect to, and it's up northwest area up here. Uh, again, the three phases. The, uh, phase one will be one to six. Phase two will be nine to 16 and uh, for eight lots, and then the uh, Phase three will actually consist of lots seven and eight, in two, and which is just two lots. So those are the phases. Right. Here we see the site plan. Here's phase one to the south, which is the first uh, six units. Here is the temporary storage basin to the uh, west of the site. Here is nine through 16, which is phase two. Once phase two is starting construction and they complete the three-quarter street for the Fond Avenue, they anticipate to construct to the uh, storm drainage basin along Lipscon Avenue, which the infrastructure is right here. Uh, there's phase three across the street to the east. Uh, one thing of note, uh, that CSD did purchase uh, about half an acre uh, to, uh, for a new well site, and uh, that is now owned by the CSD, and that is this lot up uh, that's considered not a part right up there. Moving so on. Gonna, oh, so that, they're going to provide <coughs> their own water? Uh, no, the CSD actually purchased that lot, and then the, I'll explain this a little bit, but the, they have an agreement with them to provide the water to the applicant, and the CSD themselves will provide the new well on that site. So there's already existing capacity within the system. This new well will provide even more capacity for future development. General plan consistency, uh, it's within the urban de development boundary uh, and consistent with uh, planning framework PF 1.2. Designated medium des uh, density residential, which allows single family residential units. Uh, the Tipton Community Plan, the Board of Supervisors approved the uh, Tipton Community Plan, which was a before your commission also, and certified the EIR on June 16, 2015. Um, the community plan itself designated the site medium density residential and it actually rezoned a portion of the site uh, from M1 to R3. Uh, staff prepared a finding of consistency. To, uh, it's a big, thick document, <laughs> an attachment four, I believe. And it basically said that uh, this particular project was consistent with the uh, Tipton Community Plan EIR and that we could tear off of the EIR as the environmental document for this project. Uh, and in doing so, we actually did a categorical exemption. So we did uh, above and beyond the CEQA analysis for this particular project. Uh, here's the land use of the site. Again, it's medium density residential. Right about there, you can see the storm drainage basin off to the, the west. The zoning is R3, uh, minimum lot size 600 square feet. 
and within the R3 zone, R1 is allowed. Now moving on, this is a map of the R3. All three uh, parcels are R3. Let's Ampers say that, let, Chuck, let's go sure. back to the 600 square feet. Well, R1 would be a uh, 6,000 square foot minimum, but R3 actually allows 600 uh, square feet per family. So depending on what you're doing, the actual house would be 6,000 square foot oh, minimum. Okay, so that's where a multifamily comes in. Okay. Right. But since they're doing R1, and they're not really doing R, they're doing single family, so it's essentially R1, which would be 6,000 square feet. That's, so that's kind of confusing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the applicant will provide curb gutter sidewalks, street lights, uh, the temporary storm drainage basin, as I mentioned, will be gone in phase two. They will connect to the existing line at Lipscomb Avenue uh, during phase two. And all the road improvements will be constructed within North LaFon Avenue, and a registered engineer will prepare improvement plans before the final map. Water and sewer, they have an agreement with the Tipton uh, Community Service District to provide water and sewer. The CSD purchased a half acre lot from the applicants. The CSD now owns that lot. Uh, in exchange for the well, the CSD will provide water and sewer for the 16 uh, units. Uh, according to the EIR and the CSD, uh, the Community Service District has capacity to serve water and sewer. And the new well will ensure that uh, there's <coughs> water capacity in the future. It's supposed to come online in about 2016. With that, it was an exemption, 15332, which is infill. Infill has to be less than five acres, it has to be an urban boundary, it has to be served by sufficient infrastructure, and there's no species of concern or no cultural sensitivity, which this project fills uh, all four of those criteria. And with that, a recommendation to the planning commission that you approve the category exemption and the attentive map number 837. And that concludes staff presentation. We'll be happy to answer any questions and the applicant and the engineer here. Thank you. Any questions up here? Landscaping, uh, anything on that detail-wise? So zero scape, low water requirements. So this is going to be front uh, yard, backyard landscaping. They will have to comply with the water uh, landscape ordinance for the county, but other than that, we don't have any special rules. I don't, I can ask the applicant if they will do anything for that. We could ask them during the public comment. Yeah, we could ask. No, I okay. just brought it up. You could. Nothing special, no. Okay. Uh, good project, good infill project. All right, I'm, a, I'm going to go ahead and open a public comment uh, for uh, if the public wish to make any inputs, good or bad, here's your time. Please go ahead and use the microphone and state your name and address for our records. The other microphone. The other microphone. Uh -oh. You have a special one for you. <laughs> Watch out uh, for good morning. The shock thing. What's that? Watch out for the shocking thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> uh, Good morning, my name is Sean Day, uh, 724 North Bend Maddox Way, Sweet C, uh, with Day's Drafting Engin and AW Engineering, kind of both of them together. Uh, the project that that we're doing here was basically worked with, with county doing their uh, realignment of their zoning and stuff like that, so that part is not a problem. As far as your question about the the uh, landscaping whatever the state is having everybody do is what the, the, the client is wanting to do with this you're going to provide uh, as part of the price of the home uh, landscaping correct yes just in the front yes mm -hmm. so I presume it won't be sod or turf it'll be some other alternative yeah as, uh, according to the, what the state says yeah whatever the state's requirements are that they're giving out right now that's probably the best way to go. Yeah. And, and according to the client, that's what that's he's good. wanted to that's do good. also. It's a good project. Yeah, I think it's a good. our county needs those. It'll help. Kind of housing. Anything else? All right. If you have any Thank questions, you. let me know. <laughs> no questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other uh, 
person in the public wishes to make comment? Seeing none, I'm going to go uh, go ahead and bring it back, uh, close the public comment, and bring it back to the board for uh, discussion or a motion. I make the motion we uh, approve categorical exemption consistent with CEQA and the Title 14 California Code pertaining to infill development and approved tentative map 837. Second that. Moved and second. Roll call, please. Long? Yes. Millies? Yes. Elliot? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Willach? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Okay, the motion has been approved. Thank you. Thank you for consideration. You guys can take the rest of the day off now. <laughs> Harlan <coughs> Ellis. Westbrook, I'm sorry. Harlan Westbrook. <coughs> a, dairy, a dairy guy. You know, <coughs> planner. <coughs> That's what we used to say. Okay. okay, so. Um, Let's go on to item six, uh, planning director updates. Well, as the topic of the day before the planning commission started was uh, talking about Dollar General, so I'll highlight a couple more things on Dollar General. I, I just received uh, this week that they're going to go ahead with uh, uh, a Dollar General in Poplar, that they had been looking at a couple sites there going back and forth between two, and I guess they, the Dollar General's made a determination on one of those sites. Moving forward there, they're under construction in Tipton. Understand uh, Strath or in Springville, they're, they're making a decision there as well. So they're very active in, in the county. Uh, McDonald's has been a little slow in getting their building permits or sitting there, but I understand they've done some, some preliminary work, so they are moving forward now on some of the encroachment. Uh, I guess they got an encroachment permit. They did some, some preliminary stuff, site improvements there. So. It looks like they're they're starting to move forward on the, on the building of the early Mart McDonald's. Uh, I got some good word on potential uh, uh, rural medical health care <coughs> clinics. A couple additional ones that I can't really go into specifics yet, but there's so that's something that we've seen the trend the last 18 months or two years, and it looks like we're having another one go in in another community. Uh, can't disclose it yet, but it, it'll be uh, something that we'll see shortly, and. Uh, Solar projects, uh, Con Ed has bought in all the solar projects down in Ducord, and we've been talking with them, and they're moving forward with their design um, for the infrastructure, for the interconnect, and they're, they're, they're probably going to be under construction by the end of the year. I, I believe they have to be complete their construction by the end of 2016. They have to be online, so those are moving forward as well. Uh, our, I'll, let, I'll let Aaron talk about community plans. We'll be bringing those forward. And the housing element should be going up to HCD uh, the end of next week for a draft uh, review. And then we'll be coming to the Planning Commission probably in October sometime, ho hopefully. Depends whether we get the 30-day review or not. They have a 60-day review before they, they get it back to us, but we're going to request for uh, a 30-day review. We'll see if we get that. And that should move up the schedule. But at Best early October, probably worst late October or, or first part of November for the Planning Commission for the housing element. Uh, Aaron Bach, uh, Chief Planner, uh, quickly uh, uh, update on the community plans. We have uh, Ducor and Terrabella uh, to a point where we <coughs> are proposing to get that in front of you October, November. Um, Hopefully not at the same me meeting as the housing element, uh, but might might have to be that way. Um, so uh, we're going to Terrabell and Ducor over the next two weeks to, to make sure we've um, addressed all of their concerns, but uh, so far so good. And uh, early Mart would be our next one, and uh, there is some uh, potential development interest in early Mart that uh, – may be interested in helping us do the environmental document so that 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 process is going to take a little bit longer so i anticipate the beginning of next year coming back with uh, early mart and um uh, cutler rossi is still still out there and that that's a, a much larger project so that that one is going to take us a little bit while to get in front of you but the, that should pretty much wrap up the uh the communities so um 
might see a couple more after that, but uh, the next. Is there any activity on the Yoko Valley uh, project that kind of went <coughs> back and faded into the sunset for a while? I guess? Well, it's not faded into the sunset. It's it's still it's on the horizon. Let's say. <laughs> Um, so they're, they're still doing their background uh, stuff. So we're not we're not going to see that for a while, uh, but it's still it's still there. Um, they're doing their due diligence. So there is studies. You, you interact with someone on, on this project. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Then I'll, I'll speak for my <laughs> God. Uh, we're anticipating, you know, uh, we want to be proactive and we're anticipating uh, the El Nino effect this year and we're, we're preparing and making uh, plans to protect some of the county facilities as well as the roads and the infrastructure and we're going through flood control, uh, uh, designing a, uh, a protective berm up near the, um, uh, the detention centers to uh, stop the flooding that occurred the last uh, go-round of, of floods back in 2010, I believe. So v Mike's being very proactive there, and, 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 and Aaron working with uh, the agencies to get permitting for, for some of these channels and creeks and stuff to be able to do maintenance in there. So we're, we're looking at that aggressively to try to get ahead of it and do some preventative uh, uh, projects so that we'll uh, avoid some of the flooding issues we've had in the past or that we might expect to occur when the rains do come. What about Deer Creek in 99? Uh, yeah, that's where it would be uh, uh, roof digging uh, at Deer Creek. So uh, that should be uh, coming very soon. Uh, so it, it'll be very much dependent on, on the weather and the forecast. <coughs> What is an annual um, uh, uh, gathering of all the emergency response entities in the state here uh, in September? And uh, the last year we had a couple of experts from National Weather Service uh, who provided their modeling, of, uh, their data models, uh, and their predictions, uh, which, by the way, were kind of wrong. But uh, <laughs> I think the, uh, uh, the focus is uh, so great on the prospect of um, uh, significant uh, storms this, uh, this coming season that uh, there'll be a lot of attention given to that. So we're looking forward to that meeting. I've seen the models of the ocean and the warming of the ocean and it's much bigger than anything we've seen in 30 years. And so thanks to satellites, uh, I'm not a current pilot, but I'm a pilot and that uh, satellite imaging is absolutely amazing. So. Is there any effort to retain any of this water so that we'll uh, can soak it into the ground or out on Nancy's farm or something? Uh, <coughs> if, if, I, if I may elaborate, uh, and, and uh, 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 Mike Washam was very, very accurate, uh, we have a major flood control project uh, to protect the uh, juvenile justice center facilities, the probation facilities. that again uh, thanks to Aaron's work uh, uh, Aaron and I worked directly with the Corps of Engineers to get uh, a permit for this uh, it realigns Cottonwood Creek all the way from uh, uh, Road 108 all the way uh, to the um, uh, east side of our county pit uh, which is just you know kind of uh, immediately west of the juice plant up there so uh, we, we don't want to we could move forward on that project but we would prefer to have grant money supplementing the uh, flood control district uh, fund balance. Uh, and uh, to move forward right now may jeopardize that should there be a very significant event. So we don't want to just do construction and have those improvements removed. So we have an interim plan. The interim plan is basically construct berms to uh, provide three levels of protection to those facilities in the interim. And again, Aaron came through with uh, getting us permission to, uh, uh, from Fish and Wildlife uh, 
uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife to construct those berms. So we're getting staged right now, um, uh, right after the chip seal uh, season here in the next week or two, we'll be dedicated to building those berms. So it'll be a, a substantial pro uh, uh, project in and of itself to, to provide that level of protection. So. Where will that water, uh, if the berms are diverting the water, where would the water go? Will it go into the uh, sand pits? Uh, no, we're actually going to protect in this inner plan. We'll protect the sand pits. They'll actually have provide two uh, levels of protection for the facilities in the interim. Uh, the water uh, patterns up there are kind of interesting, uh, but generally the inundation uh, naturally occurs to the north. levels of additional service to ensure that that water stays to the north. And if I may, the uh, plan to make sure it stays to the north would include a larger detention retention base and upwards of 40 to potentially up to 80 acres. So there are plans for detention. And ultimately, the uh, sand pit would serve as a, a basin as well in the, not, not the immediate plan, but what we would do in the future with the grant funding. Yeah, there's a there's a I don't know how big it is almost 80 acre parcel a piece of uh, land north of the juice plant there I sold to them years and years ago and uh, that's kind of natural uh, floodplain out through there but that would make a nice retention area if a person could could kind of capture it in there one more credit and that's all I'm going to give <laughs> to be in that vicinity. So we, uh, this was a very strategic uh, plan to design the realignment of Cottonwood Creek where we have, uh, it was redesigned four or five times, but the design currently avoided the tiger salamander. <coughs> Mr. Bond said he didn't have anything to say today. <laughs> <laughs> He's hard at work with, uh, with his group. With any consideration, I brought it up earlier, where my family farmed was in the Sacramento River out of Calusa, and Mother Nature forced us to flood our land, and it was plums, and, and apparently, I've never farmed, they were things that could stand in water for two or three months, but uh, is there any plans to like spread this water out and it would be good for pistachios or, but can you have standing water on farmland I guess it's no time for a little while Nancy's <laughs> frowning but matter of fact you know these guys that are doing drip now and then are concentrating the salts on the surface uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea no it wouldn't it would probably down. help right I'd love to see some water standing in some of my electric <laughs> That would be, I'd go out and do a happy dance. <laughs> yeah, I would think that that would be, of course, but then no there's plan too much. to dis distribute that over farmland? Well, you know, there's, uh, that's what I was going to ask you. I don't know how involved the irrigation districts are, but there are huge dry basins all over Tulare County. I, you know, they're massive. And I, I guess those could be used for flood control, can't they? I mean, isn't that the ultimate use of them? Uh, yes, and I think those uh, discussions are underway right now with the so-called white area, the areas outside the uh, uh, boundaries of the irrigation district. Mm -hmm. How <coughs> the county can contribute property that does have uh, to support the recharge? Of There's a lot of them around this county. I, There's a lot. But out by the... The jail and that county facility, there's huge amounts of subsidence on that land. The land is going down and not going up. So, Chrisman Ranch mm -hmm. is going down and not up. So. Mm. Okay. Wait, Hector, you have anything? Okay. <laughs> um, and Mike, you're not going to speak for him? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> want to make sure. Okay, so let's move on to item uh, seven, which is planning commission discussion on item for future agenda item. Do we have any? 
Commissioner Elliott, uh, we've got a planning commissioner's meeting coming up in June Lake. Yeah, it's the third week in October. And I'll, uh, I'll try by the next meeting to have a little uh, program information. It's coming along, though. I've been talking to the president, and he's, he has a busy summer season right now, but he's doing the planning. His um, uh, commission and, you know, his county's helping him you know, in, in support of it. So it's going to be quite a meeting. And we're going to um, take a look at Mammoth, some of the development that's occurred there, and then also some of the effects of, um, of developing of hydrothermal energy. And then um, also what are the effects on Mammoth in terms of, you know, climate change? You know, and how is their economy going to be planning for that in the future? So I think it's going to be a really interesting meeting. It certainly had a good place. And I don't think we'll need chains, but you never know. Area 51 close by? Area 51, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Fly and, over it. And that's the, it'll be on a weekend, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a Friday, Saturday, but traditionally. Okay. Any other future agenda? I know Gail wants to leave before 45 minutes is up, so we still got seven minutes. <laughs> no? Seeing none? In fact, make sure we last that long. <laughs> Oh, I just saw the agenda. I said, you better be done in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's adjourn then to August 26, 2015, 9 o'clock, right. same place, same time. Yeah.